day my YouTube friends and family, this is my British Computer Guy here. Sorry it's been a while since I've been on, but uh, I've had a few things going on in my personal life, so I've not had a chance to really get back to my WLED and LED content. But you'll be pleased to hear I am back, and we are going to be doing a video today on buttons and how they work with WLED and ESP32. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get straight into this. Now, this is a pretty straightforward tutorial, nothing too difficult here, um, and I'm going to make some assumptions. So I'm going to assume you've already seen my other video on how to flash an ESP32 chip. Uh, for this particular project, we're going to be using my favorite ESP32, which is the uh, ESP32D. And the D variant actually has the overhanging uh, wireless antenna there. Okay. Uh, and that's that's really good because it's actually a lot, a lot better uh, than the ones with the built-in antenna. Okay. Now there are a couple of variants of this particular chip. There's the uh, this one, this one is a 3821, but there is also a 40. 23. Now, there are several different variants of this particular unit, so several different revisions. Do not use the 4023. Do not use this one. If you can get a hold of the 3821, get a hold of this one. It's a lot better. Uh, the 4023 had a lot of issues with power cycling uh, when using WLED, um, and I didn't really enjoy it. it. It caused a lot of problems and a lot of headaches. So, top tip, use this particular one. And just so you know, all the links to products used in today's video are going to be down in the description below. Um, I will try and include AliExpress links and Amazon links as well for you. And they are affiliate links, so I do make a small commission if you decide to go ahead and use one of those links to buy a product, but it does not affect the price that you pay, and it goes to help support my channel. So thanks thanks in advance for that. So with that, let's, let's go ahead and get straight into this. So ESP32 is what we're going to be using. Um, we're going to be powering some... Um, WS2812B uh, LED strips, and these are the, I call these the high density ones. It's 144 pixels per meter. Now, we're not going to be lighting up the whole roll. We're just going to be using enough to have, have a good example here. Um, other, other items we're going to need, we are going to need a button. Um, we're going to be using a push button, a momentary push button, um, non-latching. So basically, you push it, it closes the circuit, release it, it opens the circuit. Okay. Other types of buttons you could use, you could use something like this, like a latching switch. Um, as you see, latches on. This one does not. Uh, but this, these are ideal for small projects, and they work great with WLED. Uh, this, um, I use that mainly for cutting off power to ESP32s. Um, completely uh, and use those in a different manner. So we're not going to cover this switch. We're going to cover using the uh, the momentary switch. Okay. Now you'll notice I have actually gone ahead and all, already wired up. I just soldered on there a couple of breadboard connectors to make this a little bit easier. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug these directly onto the ESP32. I'm going to show you how to wire everything up uh, and get you all going. Okay. All right. Other thing we're going to need, we are going to need a battery, so a power supply. And we're going to need a power cable. For the power cable, I'm just going to use a, a USB-A pigtail, okay, with a positive and negative wire on there. It's more than provide more than enough power for what we need for this particular purpose. Now we're going to go ahead and wire it up, get that wired up, and then I'm going to go show you how to program WLED to handle push button activity. Okay. So first of all, let's go ahead and do the basics. Let's go ahead and get the power hooked up to the uh, ESP32. And for that, we're going to take two of these uh, breadboard jumpers. And obviously, the chip has a ground and a 5 volts. The red is to go to the 5 volts. I believe that is this one here on the end. And, oops, sorry, wrong one. The red one must have gone the 5 volts. It's red for positive. Okay. Black is the ground. And we're going to go ahead and put that one on the ground, which is kitty corner, I guess they call it, or caddy corner. I don't know what it is. That's some sort of weird American saying. But we're going to put it right this one right here. There we go. Okay, ground and five volts, and the data pin. Now this is uh, this has been pre-flashed with the latest version of WLED, which is uh, version 15, uh, and that is Cosin. I believe that's how you pronounce it. If I'm if I'm not pronouncing it correctly, I apologise. Now every uh, WLED operating system that was launched after 
uh, Hoshi, well Hoshi included, used GPIO16 as the pin for the data output. So we're going to go ahead and put our green wire on the uh, GPIO16, which is down here. Anything prior to Hoshi, I believe, used GPIO2. Um, so if you're using an older version of G, um, WLED, keep that in mind. And that will show you where you can go change that if you need to. Okay. All right. So that's basically wired for the basics. Okay. Now, what we need to do, obviously, we're putting in a button, a, a push button. And the way this is going to work is what we need to do is it, the push button has two wires. One is going to go to the chip and one is going to go to uh, one of the chip's grounds or any ground, uh, any common ground. Okay. And how it works is basically when you push the button, it's going to go ahead and drop the signal from the pin to the ground. So it's going to take it to zero, zero volts. And that's going to indicate to WLED that an action has been issued by the button. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and hook this up to a GPIO pin. Now, there are several different GPIO pins you can use on the ESP32 to go ahead and do this. Uh, I'm always comfortable using GPIO, GPIO25, and that's because I know it works. Uh, you need to check the pin out on your ESP32. If you're using an ESP32D like this particular one, 25 is a safe one to go with. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this one on 25, which I believe is here. Just to make sure we've got all that nice and correct. GPIO 25. Yep. GPIO 16. Yeah. Ground. 5 volts and we also so we have to go ahead and put the other one the white connector which is the push buttons ground we need to put that on the gr a ground pin and there is actually a spare ground pin on this one as well which is nice and i believe it's right over here okay so that's pretty much all we need to do on the chip side of things we do need to go ahead and uh, add power uh, so to do that let's go ahead and hook this up and we are using our favorite little Wago connectors here. So that's the data. Let's go ahead and plug that in real quick. So take the green wire from your chip, from your ESP32, plug that into your Wago connector, give it a tug, make sure that's secure. Then we need to go ahead and supply power. So let's go ahead and plug in the power connector to the positive and the negative. And then we need to go ahead and take the power from the ESP32, the black and the red wire, and plug those in as well. So black to black, the ground, and red to red. So now when we plug this in to our power supply, which I'm using my trusty old Inu uh, portable battery bank, we'll have a 5 volt supply going to the LED strip and also to the ESP32. Okay, and um, we have the button already in place. So now I say I already have pre-programmed this with a couple of preset patterns, um, but I'm, I'm going to explain everything for you. Okay. okay. So now we have everything hooked up. All we need to do is go ahead and supply power to our ESP32 and power up the lights. Okay, there we go. Now, as I say, I have, I have already flashed this uh, ESP32 with uh, the latest version of WLED, which is called Cosin. And uh, as I say, that uses GPIO pin 16. And you'll need to know that uh, for the next part if you haven't already set that up. Okay, so now we've got it plugged in. All we need to do is go ahead and click, click on your WLED-AP network in your Wi-Fi. Sign into it. If you haven't already signed in, then you need to put in the username and password. I believe the password is WLED1234. I'll post the, the details on, sc on, the, on the screen here in a second. Once you get here, you need to go ahead and click on go to the controls and then go to config. And then we're going to come down to LED preferences. This is where you're going to be able to set up the action of the, the button. Okay, now we'll scroll down here. As you'll notice, here is the, the option where you change your GPIO pin. So if you're using an older version of WLED, such as Toki, uh, that used uh, GPIO 2 as the pin, you could go ahead and put that in there if you needed to. Uh, but it's always safe. Just you, if you can go ahead and change it. If it says 2 in there and you've already put this to 16, just go ahead and change this to 16 in WLED. So when you get down to the button section, uh, you have, you're presented with four options. 
button 0, 1, 2 and 3. Now I'm going to go through buttons 0 and button 1. First of all, button 0. And the reason I'm doing that is because some of these have default actions that, they, that can be used with WLED. So if you were to use button 0, we would basically come down here, select the GPI open we're connected to for our switch, which as I mentioned before is 25. No longer disabled. We're going to be using a push button. So obviously a momentary button. And then we're just going to hit save. Now we can take a look at the default actions for button zero. Now a quick press of the, the button toggles the lights off and on. No programming required. Easy as that. Okay. Now a longer press will actually select a random solid color from the WLED palette. And when I say longer press, any press up to about two to three seconds. Now, if you were to hold this button for six seconds, what will happen is it will actually reset your chip's Wi-Fi. And obviously, we don't want to do that. Okay. And if you were to hold this button down for now for 12 seconds or 12 seconds plus, it will actually erase the flash on your ESP32. And you don't want to do that either. So that's why I say steer clear of using button zero within WLED because it does have the potential to damage your setup. Uh, if you've done a lot of programming on here within WLED, you don't want to lose all those settings. So I'm going to show you real quick how to change that. So let's go back for a second. Oops, not back. So let's go to go back to um, LED preferences. I'm going to scroll back down. Unused on that. It's no longer a push button on zero. Button one is going to be 25. And it's going to be a push button. I'll save that. OK, so now. The defaults on this particular button is if you do a quick press, it'll cycle the effects. So you can see you've got blink, you've got breathe, you've got wipe, and wipe random. And it'll just keep going through those as long as you keep pushing that button. Okay? All right. Now, if you do a longer press, uh, it's actually going to increase the brightness. Now, it's very difficult to see on here, but you can kind of see it on the app where it's increased it. And if I hold it again, decreased it doesn't really decrease it or increase it by much but it does actually do it okay now a double press that will actually change the palette of the uh, effect that you're looking at so I go to the, the colors double press it changes the color palette that you're using and again, it'll just keep going through those forever and a day. OK, so obviously there's no on off with this right now. As before, we just pushed it once. It would turn it off and turn it back on again. Doesn't do that. So we need to go ahead and program that. It's pretty straightforward to do, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And you use something called an API command. And we'll set that up right now. So let's go ahead and set this back to this defaults. And we're going to go to presets. OK, so as you'll see here, I've already got five presets in there. I've got a solid white and four patterns. And we're going to use those here in a second. But what we need to do is to go ahead and be able to program this button and tell it to do on an on off action. We need to create a preset in the preset menu. So we're going to go to presets. And we're going to call this uh, toggle on off. We're not going to use, you want to uncheck use current state, and that will give you the option to put in an API command. Now, there's a whole list of API commands on the WLED website, but I'm just going to use a couple of them here, and I'll link, leave a link down in the description below to the other API commands that you can use. So, to be able to toggle this on and off, and I think it's WIN, oops, WIN, and there's an ampersand or an and symbol t equals three. And I believe that is the command 
to toggle the lights on and off. So we're going to go ahead and uh, save this to an ID number. We don't want to use 6, we want to use, use a larger number so as, as not to confuse it with the earlier ones. Hit save. Okay. And now we need to pr program the button within the macros function to go ahead and do that. So because right now if we do it, it's still just going to use the default actions. Okay. So let's go config. Now we want to go down to time and macros. Scroll down and you'll see button actions. Okay. So obviously we're not using button zero. These are the four buttons that we have. We're using button one. Now, as you can see here, we've got short, on, off, long, off, on, and double and A. Okay. And those are the three different actions you can do. You can do a, a short, quick press. You can do a, a two or three second press, or you can do a double press. Okay. What we're going to do, we're going to do a single press, a short on off on button one. And basically in here is what you want to do. You want to type in the preset number. So I believe it was preset 100. So save. Now when we do a quick press, the light comes on, the light goes off. Super simple. Okay. Now, there are other things you can do as well. Let's go back to our preset menu. Let's go ahead and create another one. This preset, let's say we want to go ahead and cycle by doing a, a longer, a slightly longer press between Android, Blends, Fire, and Pacifica. Okay. To do that, create a preset, and let's call this uh, transition. Oops. Let's do preset. Okay, we're going to uncheck use current state and we're going to have to type in an API command again. And the API command for this is p1 equals 1. And that's th that, that one there is the preset number 1. Okay. And P2 equals 4. Okay, that's the, the fourth number. So it's, it's going to go from, from playlist 1 through 4 in order. And we're going to define this as a playlist. So and PL, I'm assuming that what that PL means, equals. And then we want a special, it's the special character, it is this one right here, okay? I'm going to give this uh, save to ID, we're going to call this 101. I'm going to hit save. And it's automatically gone on. Okay, that's fine, let's turn that off for a second. Okay, now we need to go ahead and, once again, program the button within WLED in the macros section. So let's go back to our macros, so config time and macros, scroll down, a long on off, a long off on, we want to go ahead and choose preset 101, hit save. So we we'll turn it on by pressing once, and then we can do a long press, and now it's cycling through our presets. Okay, so now what if you want to go ahead and get it back to white? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the double press, like the, the quick double press, to take it back to the solid white color. Okay, so to do that, once again, I'm going to go back to the controls and presets. We'll go ahead, and, now we obviously have a solid white there. What you could do is go ahead and just tell the button it's a five so we can go back to config time and macros double five save so let's turn it on do a double press it takes it back to white off on 
impact cycling through presets. So it's pretty straightforward. That's really it. Uh, and obviously, if you wanted to, you can actually have multiple buttons. So I could actually go ahead and have a button on here specifically just for on off, and then I can have another button that just does selects presets. Super straightforward, super easy. So that's buttons with WLED. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, do feel free to post in the comments down below, or you can join our Facebook group, which is uh, WLED and RGB Goodness. Uh, the link to that is down in the description below. Um, as also, um, I'm, I am linking down in the description below all the parts for this particular project. So if you have any difficulty finding anything, you should be able to get them on Amazon or AliExpress. AliExpress is going to take a little bit longer to get to you, but it'll probably be a little bit cheaper. Uh, Amazon, it'll probably get you can, you, if you're a Prime customer, sometimes you can get them overnight. All right. But uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Stay tuned for more videos and uh, I will have uh, another update for you probably next week with a new video. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Take care now. Cheers. Bye bye.